In the black today, it is full speed ahead on Wall Street. The Dow was up more than 448 points to close at 34,870. The S&P rose almost 49 points to close at 43.69. And the Nasdaq jumped more than 142 points to close at 14,701. Coronavirus has taken a toll on a lot of us, especially people who lost their job because of COVID-19. So how should you tweak your post-pandemic resume? Well, we turn to an expert with some fascinating tips, including how to combat racism and ageism while landing your next job. Her name is Julia Pollack, and she's a labor economist for ZipRecruiter. You know, many people got laid off who were doing fantastically in their jobs, who were on the path to promotion. Uh, they didn't expect to be searching for jobs now. And the last time they did it, the world was a very different place. Uh, then the important thing to do was to stand out among a pack of resumes on an employer's desk. So you wanted to have a dashing design, uh, a, you know, a splash of orange along the margin, perfect uh, borders and tables and columns. Now, more than 75% of resumes are first read by a robot. They're read by computers, not by humans first. And so your number one goal when you write your resume should be to get past the bots, get past those pesky robots that stand between you and the hiring manager or the person who's going to read your resume first. Right, so the first thing is to make sure that you use a font that a computer can read and that your resume uses the most simple, basic, applicant tracking system friendly template or layout, uh, that it reads from top to bottom and left to right and doesn't have columns and doesn't have tables uh, because those will appear like gibberish. Everything will be all mixed up and scrambled. Computers are pretty simple. They like great matches. They like things to be the same. And what they're going to do is look at the keywords in the job postings for which you're applying and look at the words in your resume. And the more of a match there is, the higher you will rank in that list of applicants. So bias is so wrapped up in every stage of the hiring process and study upon study show that that's the case. Uh, I wish it weren't so. I wish we, you know, we didn't have to um, take that into account and play by the rules. Um, but let's put that aside for a second. You know, there are a couple of things that you can think about. So one is uh, your address. It can give away a lot about you. And you may not necessarily need to do that. Uh, it's not necessary to give your exact street address and say that you live in Compton. You can write Los Angeles, California. Uh, another is that we find again and again that employers discriminate against people with hard to pr pronounce names or foreign sounding names. Uh, so you can either, you know, spell out the pronunciation of your name underneath. Uh, perhaps you might want to write right under your name on your resume, native English speaker. Because uh, often employers are worried that if your name sounds interesting and unusual, that you may not be a native English speaker, and they may have concerns about your ability to, to communicate. You know, there, there's also a bias against older women in hiring. It's a very, very pronounced bias. And uh, one way to get past that is by removing lines that say things like more than 30 years of experience in law, say instead more than 10 years of experience or more than 15 years of experience. Um, also, the reason employers are biased against older women is because they just assume that they won't have the sort of tech chops to, to get by in the modern workplace. So write that you're a tech savvy, um, you know, forward thinking person with uh, experience using, you know, and then list the software programs that you use on a regular basis in your job. Uh, you know, the other groups that seem to do quite poorly are Asian Americans and African Americans in hiring. So those are the groups that, that face the biggest sort of obstacle to overcome, all other things being equal with the same skills and the same background and everything else. Uh, they have a higher hill to climb.
So you may want to list only your, your three most recent roles and you know three bullet points for each one of the big highlights of what you achieved there. Our CEO at ZipRecruiter never reads a cover letter and says that they're pointless and they've gone the way of the dinosaur. Uh, there are other employers who think that they are quite important and use them to evaluate your writing ability and uh, your, you know, your ability to, to communicate clearly. Uh, so that's one of those requirements that's kind of you know, idiosyncratic. And it is true that many hiring managers never look at them at all. And another thing that's important is your LinkedIn profile. So it's a good idea to put a link to your LinkedIn profile. You, know, you should have your email address, your phone number, and your LinkedIn profile. That's far more important these, these days than you know your whole postal address. Our website has plenty of resources for job seekers, and we have videos on our YouTube channel, and we even now have TikTok videos uh, talking about how you can you know, make your resume as successful as possible. One tip I would like to give viewers is to give their resume the robot test. So one thing you can do is upload your resume to a site like ZipRecruiter and see whether we're able to populate your online job seeker profile from your resume. Do the pieces of information show up in the right place? And chances are, we have one of the best resume parsers anywhere. If we can't read your resume, it's likely that the applicant tracking system of the employer can't read it either. And Julia also wanted us to know that if you picked up a new skill during quarantine, you might want to mention that also on your resume. She says it shows potential employers that you can work alone without a boss breathing down your neck. And a big change is hitting some Wells Fargo customers. The bank is shutting down all existing personal lines of credit over the next few weeks. And there is real concern now that it could impact consumer credit scores. Revolving lines of credit had been popular and were initially pitched as a way for consumers to consolidate high interest credit card debt. The bank says the move would allow the company to focus on credit cards and personal loans. And McDonald's is raising the bar by increasing its minimum wage. In some places, more than 36,000 hourly workers will see an increase of about 10% over the next several months. The raise applies to McDonald's company owned restaurants Entry-level workers will earn between $11 and $17 an hour. The fast food chain in Belmont, North Carolina, is advertising up to $20 an hour for new employees.